Happy Saturday, everybody. Uh, this is Becoming Off Grid, and I'm just getting back to you guys. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about the DC side of this setup. Um, these inverters right here, uh, these MPP8048 inverters, are 8 kilowatt a piece units, and they are capable of taking in solar power, you know, feeding the load directly, charging the battery. Um, they're a standard inverter. However, I'm not really using them in standard, standard inverter capacity. I'm essentially using these units here as solar charge controllers and grid charge controllers. And why did I choose to do that? Well, for one, these are European inverters. These inverters are really not great to put on the US grid. While they will work and you can get them to work with an auto transformer, um, you could get yourself into kind of a dangerous situation if you didn't take the right precautions. And I'd rather just not do that altogether if I can avoid that scenario. Um, so I am just using these inverters here uh, as, a, as, I'm trying to think of the right words. I'm just using these as, as charge controllers. But why didn't I just go with standard solar charge controllers in that case? Well, I want these things to be responsible for charging my batteries from whatever input I can give to them. So I've given them a grid input here. Um, I've got a 50 amp plug here that goes up into the bottom. So these are plugged in. And uh, these, two, these two units here are in parallel. This third unit over here will actually get connected to a generator. So this one would accept a generator input to charge the battery. And if you get just a regular solar, solar charge controller, you then have to have another accessory device that monitor and manage and maintain um, when the purpose really here is just to charge the battery. Ideally, what I wanted to do with these inverters um, when I first put the system together was to run an auto transformer, but, but that ended up just not working out. I, I got all the way there, I have the auto transformers, and I decided to, to not do that because I want a system that is on battery all the time. So I would have had to take in um, three, because I have a 24 kilowatt load. So I would have had to take three of these inverters um, and connect them to the power feed side. And then I would have had to use the other three inverters as battery chargers. And what this yields me, what the, the way that this ends up working out is that I end up with a system that is always on battery power so I have essentially a gigantic ups. Here's my stack of batteries, um, and I'm gonna be doing a battery build, build video here uh, probably next weekend. I have got a, a new battery pack in from Apexium, and I'm gonna show you how to put these cells into the, one of those cases and how that whole, how kind of whole that whole setup works and how easy it is to do. Um, one of the things that I did with these MPP inverters is, you, is by default or from the factory, they come with MC4 connectors down here. Uh, I didn't like those MC4 connectors uh, because then you have to have an exposed um, DC power cable for your solar that is inside the house and I really didn't want that. Um, so what I did was I pulled those off and they just have little clips on them and I'll show you the, the clips that you have to get. These are these are just uh, spade connectors. I got right right angle spade connectors, or uh, I'm sorry, just regular spade connectors. These are for 10 gauge. And what I did was I just brought the conduit up into the bottom and then connected the spade connector right in there on the terminal um, directly. So uh, I know you guys can't see what this is outputting. Right now this unit's outputting 2.6 kilowatts. This one, 2.2 kilowatts. Um, and this one, 1 1.8 kilowatts. It's a little bit cloudy today, so, you know, that's to be expected. Um, so power comes out of these things uh, via vis -a -vis these battery cables, and I bring them down here to this Link's power in, and then I have uh, 04, 040 um, four op ga uh, gauge wire coming out of the Link's power connector over to the inverter input side. And we will talk about these inverters, why I chose these inverters, and what their function is in a later video, and then also these two charge inverters. 
So I hope you guys uh, appreciate this video and understand a little bit more about why this system is set up the way that it is. And it's essentially so I can have a solar power setup that is always on battery. It is always online. No matter whether the source is grid power or solar power or generator power, those units never switch. Um, so I always know what their state is. I always know, um, because the, the problem with some of these types of units is how do you handle bonding? Um, and if you don't handle pro bonding properly, uh, when I say bonding, I mean the, the neutral and the ground bonding. If you don't handle, handle that property, properly, you can get into a very dangerous situation um, where you might have uh, excess power on your ground wire or something terrible to happen uh, or malfunction. And when you have them in an off-grid state, you don't ever have that problem because you already know where the bond is at and, and it never switches. So you just don't have to deal with that scenario. And then also, because your loads are always powered off of battery and always on those inverters, you get very nice, clean, smooth power. Doesn't matter if the power company, like the grid drops out while it's on AC power, like who cares? It doesn't matter because it's, it's literally always drawing from battery. And this kind of system is gonna be extremely reliable for a very long time, just predicated on the fact that all these things are, are battery chargers. All of those things are, are inverters. They don't, I'm not using the MPPT charge controllers inside of those inverters. And then your battery is just a buffer for your workloads. Um, you'll see there's four, there's four batteries here right now and each one of these battery packs is about 14 kilowatt hours. Um, I'll have five here in total. And those five should power my house for 24 full hours at the, on the worst days of the year and then uh for the majority of the year i should get two days worth of energy out of those batteries honestly to go any higher would have not been economical um just because the batteries are expensive they're the most expensive part so if you guys have any more questions about like how these things are physically wired up inside of the box i mean it's pretty simple um the power wire here comes into the ac input that's it Solar wires go into the solar wire input. That's it. There's, there's nothing special about any of that stuff. Uh, battery cables come out. Uh, these two are in parallel for uh, a very specific purpose because they are both grid fed. They both have a grid connection because I need 10 kilowatts to come off of these two inverters to charge the batteries. That's what the load, my load calculation requires because I have a three kilowatt constant load. So with a three kilowatt constant load, I need 10 kilowatts of uh, charging capacity because that way I can fill the batteries up in a reasonable amount of time. If I didn't put these two units here that are grid connected in parallel, what would happen is let's say that this one and, and I, this one here or this one here detected that the battery had dropped below say, like if I had a program for dropping below 10% or a particular voltage, well, what would happen is this unit would switch on to grid and before this unit even got a chance to do that, the condition where it would switch to grid would change. So it would never happen. So I would only ever get the output from one inverter's charger. If you put them in parallel, they communicate together between the two of them, they'll talk and one of them will say like, hey, I'm switching over to grid. The other one says, sounds good, let's do it together. And then they make the switch over together so that way they both get that grid connection and they can switch back and forth very reliably. This one over here is not in parallel because it's gonna get a generator input. Um, I've got a 9,500 watt generator, inverter generator that I'm gonna connect to this thing. So that way, um, even in the worst conditions, I can still charge the batteries. And while this one will only put out five kilowatts while it's on, um, generator power that still covers the load like the average load is only 3,000 so there still would be some excess capacity dumped in the battery now while not as good as grid charging um, it's still enough to to maintain operations and then I have these extra EG4 
uh, charge verters that'll get hooked up to a much bigger generator. So ideally, these guys here are what gets used. And then, you know, my final redundancy would be that last, that last generator input that would come over here. So um, it's possible at some point in time in the future that I may use the outputs of these two inverters here that are in parallel to run an EV charger. I do not currently have an EV, although I was shopping for an F-150 Lightning. I was looking at one of those. I thought they were really nice. They were really cool. Um, we'll see how that deal works out. I, it's not going well so far, but um, I would like these things to be able to operate an EV charger. And, and if I do get that, and I'll show you how it works, show how I got it set up. So that way I charge the batteries from solar, just like a grid tie system would do. Um, and it will work pretty much the same way. So if you guys have questions um, and you want to see a particular detail, uh, I think a good way to do this would be me to make, for me to maybe like make a short on each one of your individual questions. We can cover that. We could sh I could show you how it's wired, um, things of that nature. If you have a particular question, leave them in the comments. Uh, I, I definitely read all the comments and I do my best to respond to all of the comments that you guys put out. So please don't be afraid to ask me questions. Uh, pick apart the system. I'm always looking for, you know, negative feedback, positive feedback. Feedback is feedback. Uh, and I always want to improve this system to make it better, to make it more robust, to make it more reliable because I plan to stay off the grid. Uh, so that's pretty much all we're going to talk about for today. I I'm going to put out a video uh, the next time around where we're going to cover the AC output side. So this is DC input. That's AC output. We're going to cover how the AC outputs work. Uh, we'll go over and we'll talk about these panels electrically, how they work, um, why I chose those, maybe why you should use them too, maybe why you should not use them. Everybody's got kind of a different use case. So uh, i just like to share with you guys why I did my system the way that I did it. Anyways, I appreciate everybody watching and uh, this is Becoming Off Grid. Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, if you're in North Texas, I, I feel for you. I'm done with this heat. Have a great weekend, everyone.